you think that's going to sit there? We'll find out. So I would like to introduce Dr. Beverly Wallace. Uh, Dr. Wallace has been here a number of times since she was here, was it like six weeks ago, four weeks ago? About a month ago, uh, I'm talking about the Lutheran Center in Atlanta. Uh, as you know, we have begun a study on uppity women of the Bible. And I could not think of a better woman to speak about uppity women. <laughs> 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 Is she responsible for your grade? I, I, bet, I, I bet he practiced that over the weekend. <laughs> but in my family... Okay. Other families may think that's a bad thing. In my family, I come from a long line of strong women. And uppity is, uppity is really a compliment. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, I think. I think. I'm right. No. Are we just going to insult her? Well, let's have people. <laughs> so, um, I, think, I was wondering if you would like to lead us in prayer before we go. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Most good and gracious and loving God, we are indeed thankful for this day, the day that we celebrate the saints, the saints that surround us, even the uppity women that em embrace us, who have raised us, who have nurtured us, who continue to prod us and, and move us to understanding our faith more better. So as we gather here this day, studying again at least two other uppity women, Hagar and Ruth, we ask that you send your spirit this way, that you would indeed allow us to grow and know and, and be, be the uppity women and men that God has called us to be. We pray all this in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I need to let you know, and I think I let Eric know when I did my internship back in 94 with Bishop Gordy, um, he gave me the name of uppity woman back then. <laughs> 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 yeah, and um, as I was leaving, they developed um, at the church uh, a women's group. It's called the Uppity Women's Group. And so my legacy continues <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Indeed, I, I do consider myself sometimes uppity. Sometimes that gets me in trouble, you know. This and is uppity your alley. No more Norwegian humor. I thought that was Brooklyn humor or something. <laughs> yeah, a little of both. Um, so it is a pleasure to be able to come here and talk about a subject matter that is something that I embrace. I consider myself a womanist. How many of you have heard, other than the announcements that Eric made about what is a womanist, how many of you have heard of, of womanist, uh, a womanist and womanist theology? No. You've heard of feminists, but not womanists. Um, I'm going to go on and explain that, but I want to start with something. It was real interesting because every time I come here, I get something out of the service. And, and so today, um, what, what struck me was the gospel reading, and, um, and this might help to explain some of, 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 of how a womanist might think. Then he looked at his disciples and said, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven but that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. And then I'm going to skip down. Um, I'm not going to say all the woes, but one of them. Woe to you when, when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. 
and from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your skirt. It says shirt. I, I changed it to skirt. <laughs> Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you, as you would have them do to you. And as I heard this and I read this again and paraphrased it and changed it up a, a little bit, and that's what women do. They change things up. They embrace this, their understanding of who God is from the perspective of a black woman. You know, what does it mean for a black woman? Um, to understand who God is and then to act um, as one who is of God. And so this indeed is what a woman is to do. You know, how is that different from that of any other woman or any other man? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the lived experiences of African American women are such that um, we are sometimes hated, we are sometimes laughed at, um, we are, we are, we, we have to sometimes laugh at ourselves because sometimes the pain is so deep that um, the only thing we can do is laugh. Um, sometimes we are hungry. Sometimes we are like Hagar. And we're going to talk a little bit about Hagar and put into the wilderness. Um, sometimes we're a single mom. Um, and so how do you understand and how do you read scripture from that perspective? Everyone has a perspective. and Everyone has a lived experience. Um, and I would be able to say that you have a way of reading scripture from where you live. And so for African Americans, women in particular, there's a way of reading the scripture from where we live. I might thought that mm -hmm. the African American woman is strong. Mm -hmm. And that strength, and many times it displays strength, mm -hmm. earns her all of these wonderful monikers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it's, they, are, they are a strong breed. Mm. Well, I've written a piece. Um, there's a new book out called um, Women Out of Order. It's a pastoral care book. And I have a chapter in that book where I talk about reframing the icon of the strong black woman. And I, and I say reframe it is because others have defined us as being strong. And indeed, we have, some, we have strength. But at what cost? And what keeps us in that place where we can't, we can't grieve, you know, we can't be less than strong because we're seen, we'll be seen as weak, you know. And from from whose perspective? Well, we African Americans have bought into that too. And so, I, what I'm suggesting that for our health and our well-being, that we might want to reframe it in a way that 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 celebrates the strength, but also celebrates our humanity where we can be who we are. You know, sometimes we get angry, you know, and sometimes we, we're, you know, right now I'm, I'm without a job, and so what does that mean for you, you know? And so what do we do with, with that? You know, do I have to be strong and say, hey, it doesn't bother me that, you know, I've gone to school and have a PhD and still have no job, you know? Huh? You know, and what does, and how does that look like in the scheme of how society uh, sees um, particularly African Americans and African American women in particular. So. <laughs> um, I'm going to be using a womanist pedagogy, meaning, and, and Eric knows as well since he's in my class, um, I ask a lot of questions, you know, and so I engage in conversation. And so this, this, this Bible study that we're going to be doing is about engaging in the text and seeing it anew, perhaps from that using of a womanist um, theological perspective where we look at it from the issue of, of, of gender. And I think you've been doing this with the Uppity Women series, we're looking at gender, but also from the perspective of, of race. And then also a perspective that's oftentimes we don't look at, that of class. And so that's what a womanist <coughs> um, theological perspective does, is, is analyze the text from those three you know, areas, from that of being a woman, being um, um, sometimes looking at it from, from, from being a black woman, and sometimes looking at it from the perspective of being, um, um, doing the social analysis. What does it mean for a, a person being poor or rich? You know, what does that mean? 
how, how, if you're at that station in life, how do you understand God um, in a new way, you know, from that perspective? So, so oftentimes when you're poor, it's like, where is God in all of this? You raise those questions. You may be right, you raise those questions too, but do we take in consideration the other? And so that's what a woman's theological perspective will take into consideration. Yes. Can you raise your voice a little? Oh. Me, I'll try to go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'll go to the table. And that now. too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, I will try to use my outside voice. You must be a teacher. 